Hello everybody, and welcome to another game of StarCraft II. My name is Big Blue Firebat, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you a best of five series from the DreamHack Invitational Finals in Valencia, Spain. We have spawning as the Blue Terran, Maus Thorzane, a Swedish player, an absolute monster of the game, a high-level professional player, and he's going to be facing off against his Red Zerg opponent, Dong Regu, a South Korean Code S player, known for his Terran vs. Terran excellence, one of the highest ranked players on the Korean ladder, which means that he's going to be just an excellent, excellent player. And we're going to, and they are going to be spawning here on this map, Shakuras Plateau. And uh, one of the nice things about Shakuras Plateau, one of the interesting things, is that you are not able to spawn at this close by ground ally position from your opponent. So Dongregu realizes that Thorzine either has to be here or here, and Thorzine realizes that Dongregu either has to be here or here. And in fact, Dongregu is going to be scouting in the correct direction with his Overlord. He's going to find Thorzine right away. And I forget to mention, these guys are playing, Thorzine playing for Team Mouse, and Dongregu is playing for Team MVP. He is one of their all-stars, and we are going to have a great game, I hope, in this best of five series. Already we have Dong Regu heading out, fairly um, standard opening play for a Zerg player. He's going to scout out, check for any bunkers, check for any barracks, check for any SCVs, and then I expect we see a drone heading down for a hatchery for a quick expansion. He's going to want to get his macro up and running as quickly as possible. Now Thorzane, known for his uh, fairly methodical style play, his fairly uh, macro-oriented play, he is interested mostly in uh, going with siege tanks. He likes to crush his opponents, he likes to squeeze them out of a game, set up siege lines and slowly advance until there is nothing left of his opponent. And we have him setting up his wall off here. No expansion going down quite yet. It's going into a very standard style of Terran play, getting his orbital command, getting his barracks, getting his wall off set up. And I expect to see some pretty standard play from both of these players. Both of them extremely high level players. They both know what works and oftentimes the most conventional um, macro style play is what is most effective. You might get a game or two if you go with a, for a slightly cheesier all in, if you go with a lot of very early game aggression, big risk, big reward kind of style. But against such a high level set of players, I expect to see them both go for a more macro oriented long term game. And we already have Thorzine in here. He's scouting around. He's going to see the gas, see the spawning pool, see the hatchery go down and I doubt he's going to throw down any pressure there's only one marine heading over a second one is on the way and we'll see what he chooses to do over here he's checking out this um, hatchery and he has this SUV in position to build a bunker we're going to see if uh, he does looks like he's not going to do anything he's going to fall back he realizes that drones coming off the line could take care of anything he tried to do and he's going to focus instead on getting his own expansion he has a command center coming down for himself and Dongaragu is placing his overlord in a strong position he's going to hop in here see the gas he's unaware i think of this second gas going down so but he's aware of at least one gas so he's going to have to uh, prepare for potentially blue flame hellions perhaps even a hellion drop or cloaked banshees we'll see what he does in the meantime, not overreacting too much to everything. He is aware of the wall off, and uh, he is responding by getting a Roach Warren hanging up out here, which is uh, an interesting spot for it. Not really outside of scan range, just kind of outside of drop range. If a Terran player were to drop back here, it is unlikely that he would be able to have enough time to run up, snipe that Roach Warren down. So it's kind of a good, safe tech positional area. <clears throat> And he's going to, uh, and Dong Regu is going to use those roaches to perhaps bust down this door, maybe just take uh, firm map control, maybe take over this area here so that uh, Thorzine can't move down with SCVs and Marines. He's going to require some heavy ordnance, some siege tanks, some marauders. And speaking of that, we are seeing two factories going down and an additional command center. Thorzine really wants to get his macro going. He wants to get his orbital commands up. He wants to drop those mules everywhere. And we have a couple of Zerglings hanging out on the side with seven roaches being, for, being produced by Dong Rangu. He is going to use these roaches, get a little bit of early aggression here. And he's sac sacrificing some of his harvester count for that. But I think this is going to pay up in the long term as we have roaches running down. And this is going to be a perfect timing. There is almost no... Um, units for Thorzine that can take care of these roaches that are heading over. The expansion is going to be delayed and we now have a single Hellion coming out, two Hellions coming out, and Hellions are just crap against roaches. They are not going to be able to do much more than tickle their armored carapaces. And now we have the roaches heading on over. 
We have Blue Flame, uh, Infernal Prignator being researched, Simpack being researched, a little bit of a Zergling scouting up, seeing exactly what I want to see, and Dong Ringu has got to be happy about this. One Marine is going to go down almost for free. Second Marine is going to be taken down next. This third Marine trying to run away, but no, get taken down. And now there's almost no defense. Hellion getting canceled. Two Siege Tank, uh, siege tank being produced with another Hellion. This Supply Depot goes down, and now these Siege Tanks are going to have to do what they do. This Tech Lab is actually being focused down. Simpack halfway done. That is huge. Simpack has been uh, completely finished, and now we have research, or uh, we have uh, roaches inside the mineral line of Thorazine, doing tons of damage, taking out supply depots, taking down SCVs, and now the mar there's a marauder in the field with uh, some Hellions roasting down these roaches. SCVs absorbing some damage, but roaches are so tough, and now the Sea Tank finally coming out, doing tons of damage, 25 damage a shot to those armored roaches, and Sea Tanks are extremely effective in unseized mode against things like roaches. And it uh, looks like they are finally going to go down, but that was a huge pickup for Dong Regu. And in the meantime, he used that aggression to take his third macro up. He's producing seven drones at a time. He already has 38 drones to Thorazine's 23 SCVs. And that was a huge pickup. This final roach finally going down to the siege tank. And I have to say that um, Dong Regu is in firm control of the game. But with these three orbital commands, even though Thorazine lost 12 SCVs, he's going to be able to reproduce them almost immediately. And more importantly, he's going to have extra energy to drop down mules. Thor uh, Dong Regu, for his part, was able to get a full scout with his roaches. He's completely aware of the fact that there are three command centers in that base. And uh, the two factories, along with um, the number of gas and the expansion timing, so he is in a firm, strong position, maybe um, up a little bit economically. He has 55 workers to, to Thorazine's 32, but these mules are going to be making up the slack quite a bit. Each mule is worth approximately four SCVs during its time of life. It can mine, they mine extremely quickly, and we have this creep moving along across the map. And I think we're going to see uh, both players just moving along into their respective builds. The early game pressure from Dong Regu was very effective, but it's not going to be enough to end the game outright. And now we have Helens running across, taking control of these watchtowers, trying to pull map control away from Dong Regu. Thorazine wants to keep his Zerg opponent in the dark, and he's going to be sending these Hellions to scout it. He is unaware of this third base as of yet. Uh, I would not be surprised to see those Hellions run up and check things out. And Dong Regu, for his part, great saturation, getting his other his two gases at this third base. Some of the most important things for Zerg players is to get those gases as soon as you get onto the third base. You want to get as much Vespian gas as you possibly can because a Zerg higher tech is not restricted by minerals, it is restricted by gas. You will often see a Zerg player stockpiling way more minerals than he has gas. So it's, whenever you expand, very important to get these two Vespian geysers up and running as soon as possible. And uh, Dong Regu throwing down a fourth drone on that extractor for some reason. Probably a mistake. Both these players have a lot of calls on their attention. Don Regu is rocking the APM. Look at that. He is performing 280 average APM and right now going for 350. That is 300 and 50 actions per minute. Just think about that. He is all over the place. His fingers are flying across the keyboards. And we have Spire Tech going down. Two Evolution Chambers. Another Hatcher taking a fourth base. He wants to get his economic game going. Don Regu is a self-proclaimed Terran vs. Zerg pro he loves Terran versus Zerg play he feels it to be his strongest his strongest uh, matchup and we're gonna see how he's able to perform here getting a lot of hits from those siege tanks as uh, the supply deal was going up and these roaches although they are tough are not gonna be able to run through these four siege tanks in a great position but I see a couple of mutilists 11 mutilists coming down for Dong Regu and there are not two there are almost no missile turrets set up throughout this base I think that if these mutilists strike in the right spot at the right time they're gonna be able to do with just a ton of damage and now we have Mutilus running out, flying across the field, and we're going to see what uh, Dong Regu was able to do with these attacks. Both players um, macroing up very well. We have um, 59 SCVs set up for Mouse Thorzain. He was able to uh, recover from his early game loss of those 12 SCVs fairly easily because with the mules uh, mining at about the same amount, but we have Mutilus in the base going for the Simpack is finished by the combat shield go is going to go down. That poor tech lab has been taken out, and that is just terrible for these Marines. There are so many Marines, combat shield making them so much more effective, but he is going to have to, uh, Thorzine is going to have to build another tech lab, start that research all over again, and that is, I would have to say, fairly significant as Marines, when you are making them in so many numbers, when you're going siege tank Marine as Thorzine seems to be doing, you want as much power, you want as much, as many hit points as you can get on those Marines. 
And we have just um, a fairly, looks like standard Zerg play here. Uh, we have tons of Mutalus in the air, although he's deviating a little bit, not going for the Bane Links, choosing instead to go for Roach with uh, Mutalus and just setting up his fourth base now. And now we have him moving into the front door. These Medi the Medivac forced to pick up those Marines as they were gonna die from those Roaches and Mutalus. And now the Roach is getting in, killing a bunch of sea tanks. Mutalus hang out in the, in the sky, but there are enough missile turrets now. They have been built in response to all those Mutalus. Uh, missile turrets all over the uh, base and a ton of ton more barracks going down for Thorzane. And Dong Rai Gu, for his part, is doing great. He's just hanging out on the front door just sitting at the bottom of this ramp, preventing Thorazine from moving out, keeping him pinned inside his base. And that is something that Zerg players are gonna wanna do against a Terran player. You wanna keep them in the base. You wanna keep them mining. More importantly, you wanna keep them sending mules down on their main, on their natural. You can see here that Thorazine is almost mined out in his main. He is completely oversaturated. He is m almost oversaturated at his um, expansion, his natural. And he is just now taking his third, but this is an extremely vulnerable position. He is not comfortable about all this. And there, there are more, more Mutalists, more Marines. Gonna, and Dong Ragu is going to catch these SCVs transferring over, killing a couple more Siege Tanks, a ton of Marines. And he's now aware of this base heading down. And this Orbital Command is forced to turn around completely. He might even go down. We have Mutalists going to town. Plus one upgrade, doing tons of damage. Those Glaive Worms are just going crazy against that command center. And the Orbital Command is going to survive, just barely. We have SCVs coming in to repair it. Lots of Marines coming to defend. But Thorazine can jump between here and here and here, back and forth with those Mutalists so fast, not having to go over the ground. And the Marines that are forced to defend do have to run up and down that ramp. And now we have a Macro Hatchery going down for Don Rigu. You can see here he's taking his gas at his expansion. He is not too worried about the minerals. And he is nearly maxed out. Domergo showing the power of a macro Zerg, keeping this Terran player, keeping Thorazine pinned on his base. Finally, a Thor is out here. Those Javelin missile launchers are going to be able to crush down those Mutalists unless we see Domergo using that metal magic box technique, but with so many Marines and a Thor, I think that the air aggression is going to be stemmed back for the moment, and Domergo is throwing down pathogen glands, getting Zerg Carapace level one to reduce the effectiveness of those Marines. And we have nice creep spread, uh, cre a queen out here spreading creep on her own. And we're just going to keep going with the Mutalus air harassment. This has been great harassment from Dong Ragu. Keeping up that APM. Look at that. He's doing everything at the same time. 300 APM this game. And we got more Mutalus coming in. That missile turret taken down despite the repair. We got another missile, another missile turret going down. And now the SCVs are completely vulnerable to attack. Stim Marines running in from the north forcing those Mutalists to fly away, but Shakur's Plateau has this enormous area, four areas to hide, and now they want to run back, take down that upgrade at the uh, engineering bay, but all, there are just too many Stim Marines here, and Combat Shield is just now starting, halfway done for Thorazine. I gotta say that that is a big problem. Um, he needed that Combat Shield, and he needed it 10 minutes ago. <clears throat> Now we have this third base finally up and running, all those extra mules being used over here, and you can see that he is almost mined out at his main, but Don Ragu is having none of that. He's going to put the pressure on. He's going to try to pu uh, push the hammer down. He wants these Zerglings in there. He wants his base annihilated. Now we have Zerglings and Mutalists taking down this Thor, taking down these Marines, and this is simply an orbital command. No planetary orders, no extra defense, and all these SCVs are going to go down. I think that this orbital command is going to be forced to live up lift up siege tank on the high ground doing tons of damage to those zerglings but it's not enough they chase away all those scvs and now it is forced to live up uh, lift up and now even the queen coming in doing some damage to that orbital command marines forcing away the mutilus and killing the queen but i have got to say that thorazine is in a bad spot he is um on the back foot to Don Ragu taking his fifth base now he's going to be running the zerg macro machine huge bundle growth going down on all those marines and we got more Stim Marines coming in. Combat Shield finally finished, giving them their, that extra 10 hit points for more uh, durability, more Stims. And this Orbital Command is almost done getting repaired by these SCVs. Going to survive, but I'm not sure what uh, Thorazine is going to be doing. There is constant pressure coming in all the time from Don Regu. And we even have a Command Center hanging out here. And I think that this Command Center placement is very, very smart. What happens is if there are any Zerglings that are interested in running after these siege tanks, they are forced to funnel into a... Nasty little choke. All the Marines can hang out, hide out in here, and be well protected. And when he's ready, he can go and try to expand somewhere else. He's even moving that up to get a slightly better position. And that's what I'm talking about. Zerglings forced to run around that command center, but these Mutalists are in a very a dangerous amount of. Um, there's a dangerous amount of Mutalists now. 28 Mutalists 
flying around, doing tons of damage everywhere. And now we have Great Creep Spread, Banelings finally moving in. We have Domregu of Nile moving into the preferred Zerg strategy against Terran. He's been going to town. He's been doing great with just Mutalis and Zerglings, and now he's going to introduce Banelings to this to this composition and I'm not sure what Thorzane is going to be able to do. Another great fungal growth, trapping all those marines, allowing them to be picked off by the mutilus and we have this orbital command down once again trying to mine using those mules but he 